Joining us now, pinch hitting for Sean Casey this week, Danielle McCartan, WFAN. Danielle, good to see you. Yeah, you too, Mark. How's it going? Good, good, good. You're at today's game, 14-7 loss. How high is your level of concern after dropping another series to a team that uh, they should have beat? Yeah, I think the Yankees are starting to get ready for football season with that score. 14-7, lost by a touchdown, man. Um, you know, at, at, after that Washington series, I was on the radio on WFAN, and I'm like, you know what? It's okay. It's just one series against a, a poor team. And now it's been two series dropped against two poor teams with the Texas Rangers also on deck uh, in the next series here. So, yeah, I'm a little concerned. Not about the bats, because you figure you score seven runs, you figure you win the game, but more about the pitching. Um, you know, uncharacteristic outings from, you know, a bunch of the guys in the bullpen, you know, between yesterday and today. So um, not about the bats per se, but I'm really concerned about the pitching moving forward. And I'd like to see what kind of moves they make um, moving guys out of the starting pitching rotation and into the bullpen. And uh, when Clark Schmidt comes back and he's ready to go. All right, Danielle, Anthony Rizzo back in the lineup today. First time since breaking his arm back in mid-June. Two for four in RBI, two runs scored. They haven't been getting much out of first base, counting on Rizzo to fix that. What do you make of Riz this afternoon? Oh, man, I mean... That is exactly what the doctor ordered, right, for, for the Rizzo and the Yankees. I mean, they like you said, they haven't been getting really anything. Mark, you and I can get in there and probably hit better than any of the guys <laughs> in there. Ben Rice, he had that hot start. It was great. 174 on the season and then 063 over his last seven games. The DFA was inevitable. DJ LeMahieu at the moment, he's hitting 202. I mean, anything is better than that. And it is a welcome sight to see Anthony Rizzo back there at first base. Um, for his glove, too. Not that that was a problem, um, but for the bat to be in, you know, he, he's coming back and he's hitting seventh in this Yankees lineup. It's a non pressure situation for him. And I, I really, I actually said to my dad when we were on the way to the game today, I was like, I kind of like seeing Rizzo batting seven. I think that's a good spot for him. So a welcome sight to see Anthony Rizzo back on this in, on this uh, lineup here. I think uh, Brian Cashman thinks he's the smartest guy in the room, doesn't he? He thinks he's playing chess when everybody else is playing checkers because the thing is with Jason Dominguez and why he wasn't called up is because he gets to keep his rookie status for next year, provided he doesn't go more than 130 at bats, uh, the career at bats. So he's got 35 now at the major league level. So, and then now here's the extra step to this, keeping the rookie status for, for 2025 allows the Yankees to, to get a 2026 draft pick if he wants and, and if he wins the, the 2025 AL Rookie of the Year award. So this is Brian Cashman trying to play chess when everybody's playing checkers here. And that's a those are two long shot things kind of to happen here. So I, I, I say, why is he not part of this? The 28 best players are not out there right now. He's been crushing it at the AAA level. I mean, at this point, you got a question. Are the Yankees really all in by trying to, to do, uh, do these roster calisthenics, these lineup calisthenics? I don't get it. Jason Dominguez should be in the Bronx today. He's hitting 298 down at AAA. How about Aaron Judge, number 99? Got his 1,000th career hit this week. Six games without a home run in the Cardinals series. It was one for 12 with seven strikeouts. Hard to get on the guy, but uh, what do you make of what Judge is doing right now? Yeah, like, like you just said, it, it's hard to get on the guy when he is in the midst of what could be another historic season, right? But... You know, it's a slump. I mean, it happens. And, oh, by the way, he is still getting intentionally walked. He was walked today with a 2-0 count. They walked him. I, was part, I wasn't there as media today, so I was allowed to boo the pitcher in that situation. Um, you know, and it's incumbent upon other guys to start picking him up a little bit. You know, Soto, too, he's hitting 200 over his last seven games. Just one home run and three RBI. But uh, maybe you lean into guys like Stanton, who hit another home run today early in the game. Jazz Chisholm's been on a tear. So, yeah, it's easy to, to pick out and single out Aaron Judge, of course. Um, but, I mean, this Cardinal series wasn't pretty. I just, I can't imagine a guy that, that is as good as a player as he is having an extended slump. Uh, I think it's only a matter of time before he breaks out. And we are expecting Aaron Judge to hit a home run every single game. And, and, and you know what? Not only that. It's just, more importantly, just to get on base and to keep that line moving for the guy behind him to pick him up in that situation. So 
I'm not too worried about Aaron Judge. He'll break out of it soon. All right, Danielle, over to the rotation. Marcus Stroman, great Friday night, seven strong innings. But uh, after giving up 18 home runs through the end of July, gave up zero in the entire month of August. What, what do you make of Stroh's turnaround? Historically speaking, better first half than second half. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I think Marcus Stroman pitched himself into the, the postseason rotation, uh, you know, in a, in a short series for me. I mean, this guy, he he was seven strong. That's what you need. I am so sick and tired of these pitchers going five innings and, and everybody calling it a quality outing and they did good. No, Marcus Stroman went seven innings in his last outing. That's what you need in the postseason and seven good innings. So, you know, you don't want to break into that bullpen too early, too often, because in a, in a postseason series, you're playing the same team over and over and over again. They're gonna they're gonna pick up on something. They're gonna they're gonna gain an advantage by by showing your cards uh, so early in the postseason series. So uh, I, I think for me, Marcus Stroman, based on that last outing, and we'll see what happens in his next outing. But for me, I actually. In that, in that outing he had, that seven-inning outing, he has locked up, uh, for me, a, a postseason starting pitching rotation with, with some confidence, some level of confidence. So good for Marcus Stroman. Return of Rizzo probably means we're not going to see much of DJ LeMahieu moving forward. Have we finally seen the last of G DJ getting meaningful at-bats? You know, Moose, as much as this pains me to say it, I mean, that would be the right move here. I mean, I looked, I was on the radio on WFAN, and the Yankees DFA'd Josh Donaldson after 33 games last season. That was the length of his leash. And I, at, it happened to be DJ LeMay, who had hit 33 games at that point when I was on the radio. And this, the numbers for DJ LeMahieu at that point were worse than that of Josh, Don Josh Donaldson, and they DFA'd him. And they're not much better now for DJ LeMahieu. So, I mean, he's a good guy and, and, and everything. He was a good Yankee. And I'll use it in the past tense, I think. But you can't be serious about playing this guy in the postseason and then tell me you're all in. I mean, what would his role be anyway on a postseason roster? You Rizzo is your first baseman. Jazz Chisholm Jr. is your third baseman. Uh, Cabrera is your infield utility guy. And he was even taking reps at first base yesterday for the second time in his entire career. So this is something. I've advocated for since 33 games into DJ LeMay, who's 2024 season. I mean, it's time for the Yankees to just rip that Band-Aid off because the longer this goes on, the longer this guy is on the team, the harder it's going to be for them to do it. The closer they are to the postseason, it, it's just going to get that much harder and that much more gut-wrenching. So I say rip the Band-Aid off. It's time, and the Yankees are set up to move on without him. As, as much as that pains me to say, they're ready to move on, and I don't understand the allegiance to him. I mean, they've had the guys on the roster to replace him anyway. Good guy, likable. Also, they own $32 million over the next couple of years. I think that also plays a role into it as well. Danielle, the Yankees have not been able to separate from Baltimore in the American League East. Do you think the AL East is going to come down to that three-game series with Baltimore in the Bronx later on this month? Oh, man, that Yankee Stadium is going to be jumping those nights. And the first of which of those games is on national TV. So uh, I think Major League Baseball kind of had that into the calculation as well. Yes, of course, the Yankees have the chance to bury the Orioles September 20. What is it? Fourth, fifth and sixth. That is going to be the series of the year. The AL East is going to be won and lost during that season, uh, that series. No doubt about it. And I have got my popcorn ready for it. Danielle McCartan, WFAN, thanks so much for joining us this Labor Day weekend, and we'll hear you on the radio soon enough.